All right, hey there guys. This is Kevin and this is video lesson number eight in your calendar course series <clears throat> that you are progressing through. So I hope that you are enjoying it. I truly hope you're gaining value out of it. And at minimum, you are experiencing and understanding, beginning to understand how calendars are usable, how they function, how they are just another tool in a way that you can gain exposure to the stock market and specifically options trading. So let's just back up and recap just for a quick second here because in this video lesson all I'm going to do is go through uh, example after example after example after example. So you'll be able to see how 10 different underlines or five different underlines or 30 different underlines, depending on how many we get through, uh, will react differently in different market conditions. Okay, so the last video lesson I just talked a lot about you know how we can use that knowledge of the T plus zero line and keeping a T plus zero line as flat as we can so that when we are coming up on a trade that maybe only has five days to expiration and we want to purchase a net debit of a calendar, we have a much different looking approach than if we come out here where there's 30 days left in expiration. And we get a much flatter T plus zero line, essentially giving us a lot more safety, well, perceived safety, all right? Your risk is still there. And even further out in time, all right, you're gonna get a, even a flatter T plus zero line yet. So the whole reason and the whole premise behind that is you are buying and selling time. The options that you are selling have a lot more both intrinsic and extrinsic value in them. Same with the options you're purchasing. And you'll notice that what you have sold for $4 here, you're protecting with $5.25. $125 net debit out of your account. Versus something you sell for $1.49 that you protect with $2.95, all right? You have a net debit of 146, not essentially, you know, a, a little bit more, not much in terms of absolute dollar amount, but that profile is night and day different, right? I mean, you can see you have a very narrow window. You have a lot more risk to a strong directional move, and yet your true risk your margin to put on this trade is exactly the same. All right, so the reason why we want to always keep that in our forefront is in special circumstances, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video lesson, how we can use our knowledge of both keeping a flat T plus zero line, how implied volatility influences calendars, as well as how price movement impacts a trade how all of those elements impact a trade around if we want to say trade an earnings event or a news announcement or we're getting ready for an FOMC news release. Whatever the case may be, if you are getting ready to participate in a market that may move pretty wildly one direction or the other, well, the more distance that you can give yourself from that move, the better off you're going to be. So what I want to do here is just spend the next 30 or 40 minutes really just going through a, a ton of examples to just show you and we'll just talk about how these calendars are working differently and when you have Let's just bring uh, the Thinkorswim platform over here. How when you have a 
earnings announcement like right here for example on Apple July 21st you had earnings report you had a massive gap open and then you just had one month full of just downwards trading activity what that will do to a position in real time so we'll just go through you know, you can see every earnings announcement is going to have some type of reaction the reaction will either be insignificant or it will be pretty violent or, or pretty massive so I just I want to walk through many examples and just show you how a calendar will react if you come if you come too close if you come too far um, some pitfalls to be on the lookout for if you are going to add this into your trading uh, arsenal of well let me take a, a small small spec trade here and there if uh, you know I want to take advantage of some of this decaying volatility after the earnings move and uh, you know just gain more <clears throat> exposure to these calendars <clears throat> so let's just jump on in okay enough enough talking about what we're gonna do let's do it <laughs> um, now you'll see that here I have saved a personal watch list of the top 30 um, these are the top 30 stocks that I think are valid and very viable to trade options on so we can just go through and we'll just we'll just talk about Apple since that's the first one top of the list one of the you know high flyers one of the favorites one that's been around for a while and look at if let's just say here July 21st of 2015 we had earnings that estimated were a dollar eighty the actual was a dollar eighty five so they beat earnings and yet the stock got crushed now what will that do in terms of an options trade well we'll come back here in time to July 21st 2015 now let me just restate all right these are actual prices that actually filled in the market at this point in time all right option view will let me go back in 30 minute increments of time and it will give you what the market price was of an option at that point in time I can look at open interest I can look at bid ask <clears throat> spread you know Apple is one it's <clears throat> penny wide spreads and it is um, an underlying asset that is heavily heavily traded so going into earnings all right this is earnings have already reported let's just go and we'll say two weeks before earnings all right and not that there's any magical time where you start thinking about these trades but we just want to say leading up into earnings the implied volatility on these front month options if there is if there is more um, if there's more uncertainty coming into earnings say for example Apple's got a new iPhone release coming out or a new iPad or a new piece of hardware and there's a lot of anticipation or a lot of excitement around that event that just happens to coincide with an earnings date well in that um, scenario of uncertainty whether that's excitement or fear either one you're gonna see this implied volatility begin to elevate going into earnings now sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes that's a terrible thing using this example if I were to come in here two weeks before earnings and say Apple is at 125 here's the price chart I have no opinion whatsoever it's been in a big range bound move for you know an extensive period of time I mean going back here one two three four pretty much four solid months maybe at the beginning of this fifth month here you can see it started to enter this channel and I want to say well 125 looks like a great strike price let me just I can either come in the puts or the calls and I want to sell one option at the 46 date expiration time frame I want to buy an option for protection at the 74 day to expiration time frame 
I convert that trade. This is what it looks like. I have a you know pretty wide distance looking at this T plus zero line. Again, this is what represents the passage of time. I can really, between now and a 46 days to expiration, I can let this get all the way between 118 and 132 and essentially not lose too much money on this trade. It's an $86 trade. All right, it's really, I don't want to say it's insignificant because that is a lot of money in certain parts of the world, but for our purposes here, if we're talking about trading 10 or 20 or $50,000 accounts, $86 is insignificant. So <clears throat> I want to say, well, watch what the implied volatility does leading up. Watch what happens after the earnings announcement. And recall, you know, we looked at Apple. It reported earnings and the very next day it gapped open and it just absolutely fell off to, you know, all the way down here. It, it, it ended up getting all the way to 92, but that's, I think there were other factors in here. So we'll just look at the week post earnings so that we can see how these will respond. We'll go a week into the future. We started the trade at 125. Really haven't <clears throat> gone anywhere. We're still at 125. <clears throat> and here is the day earnings will report after the market close on the 25th or uh, the 21st, we're at the 125 strike price. Apple's at 130. So our volatility on these front months goes from 28 and 25 to 19 and 20. And what is super relevant and super important, this is very pertinent, this is very important, and this is a very potent piece of information, so please don't miss it, please. <clears throat> Implied volatility is always going to elevate leading up into earnings. Sometimes it's rapidly, sometimes it's gradually, but after the earnings have reported, after the news is known, after the event occurs, this volatility is always going to deflate like a massive balloon. It's going to come rushing out rapidly. So a trade that looks like this, again, uh, we said that we would, you know, give it a range underneath this tent, uh, 133.65. Never quite got to that point, so there's really no reason to close the trade. And you'll see that the trade is, you know, essentially break even. What we sold for $4.52 is worth 746 what we bought for 538 has lost and is now worth 835 all right so what we're looking at is the gain here is offset by the loss here essentially making this a break even trade now watch what happens when this implied volatility deflates the very next day earnings are out the news is known now, what we sold for 452, we buy back at 271. What we bought for 538, we sell back at 405. So the gain that we realized here on these front months because the volatility just decreased uh, significantly is much greater than the loss that we incur on this option. Uh, the volatility did decrease, but nowhere near the percentage or the ratio as it did on this side. All right. And then you'll see that here we have a trade that essentially, you know, we missed earnings, but the way we were positioned, we dropped pretty significant amounts. So you close the trade up or you keep it for another week and you say, well, let me let me see what would have happened. Essentially, you know, nothing really. You keep building a little bit more profit. And if it got all the way here to say this expiration break even point, either all the way down to 119, or you want to just close it to 121, you have choices at that point in time. All right. But the, the takeaway to this example is we had an earnings move that 
gapped open, traded down, beat earnings, but we still had a big move, and your calendar made money. So let's look at a different example. Let's say, all right, well, that was Apple. What about uh, Amazon? What does Amazon do around earnings? All right, well, you can see there's usually going to be some kind of reaction. And if you know, just can look at the chart here, earnings, 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 all right? There's usually some kind of reaction that happens. In this case, it gapped open, but a couple of weeks later, three weeks later, it came back to about where it was trading pre-earnings. This one never came back till you know many months later. This one didn't come back till many months later. This one, who knows if it's going to come back or not. So we can take uh, and we can look at. We can go back in time. Uh, we can let's just go back several years. We'll go back three years, and if we just look at every time there's an earnings announcement, there's usually a reaction around that earnings either gap open and trade higher, gap open, trade lower. And so sometimes it's really a non-event. But when you have the big moves like this that gap open and just break away, gap open, break away, return to a range, gap open, range, drop back into that range, gap open and just take off, that's usually what's going to happen. All right, so if we just want to look at, let's go back here, uh, let's pick a different one. Let's pick this one right here. All right, on January 28th of this year, January 28th, 2016, we've got an earnings estimate of $1.61, actual of a dollar. Huge miss, right? Huge miss on January 28th. So, Let's go into option view for Amazon and just look at what that did. We'll go January 28th. And there's no way we're getting through 30 examples on this video. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go. Let's go the the week of the Monday of that same earnings week. Now, here is the price chart leading up to. All right, Amazon, much much higher priced stock. Options are going to have a lot more premium in them. Look at the volatility has already started to really massively increase in this front month. Let's go back to the week before. Again, front month just refers to the option, the cycle that is the closest to expiring. I could say this is the front month. Um, the options that are expiring in a couple of days don't really refer to those as the front month, but look at this right here, all right? Uh, this is gonna be some bad data in this point right here. There's no way you've got 40, 40, 39, 38, and then a 21.7 here. That's that's just a bad piece of data. Um, but you've got an elevated implied volatility, and what you're saying and what you will notice is that if this is the front month we will be referring to, as we get closer and closer to the options expiring, this is going to or I'm sorry, as we get closer and closer to earnings, this is going to elevate. And then as we get closer to expiration, the premium is what deflates. So let's go back to that Monday of the earnings week. We got earnings report on the 28th. You know, whatever your personal opinion about Amazon is, if you think they're gonna miss, if you think they're gonna hit, doesn't really matter. Let's just say we have an unbiased, we have no opinion whatsoever. Amazon's at 595, that's the strike I wanna use. The end of the day on Monday, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna sell a front month, I'm gonna buy a back month. That's a calendar trade. It's not an $86 trade anymore, it's a $657 trade, and this is the profile it gives us. It gives us still a 
relatively pretty flat T plus zero line. It gives us a pretty wide range. You know, um, we will we could have a pretty significant, pretty sizable move, and and really not be down. We would not be down our full margin of 657, but you know we would be taking a little bit of drawdown, and then we would have to decide: Are we going to adjust? Are we going to close it? Are we going to fight it? But you're you are making the market prove to you what it's going to do first. All right, so and that's a down move or an up move, either one. So let's say that that's what we're going to do. I've got a volatility at 52. I've got a volatility at 43. This is ideal situation. We've got a front month that has a much higher implied volatility than the back month. This premium is super rich on these options here. Once volatility comes out after the announcement, it will come out at a greater percentage related to the back month. So let's just go to the 28th day of the earnings announcement. I don't know if it happened before or after. Let's look and see. Um, after market close. All right, so we're going into earnings. You'll see that you know we're already up. <laughs> we're up in a few short days. Uh, we're already up a hundred dollars. You can close it if you want. Keep it open if you don't, or if you know if you want to do that, close it or not. But fifty-four and forty-six now becomes twenty-nine and thirty-one. All right. Do you please see the uh, what occurs? You have a fifty point five zero, not one five five zero point move in a stock that got absolutely just killed on earnings, all right? And your implied volatility, the earnings is out. Earning, they, everybody knows now what the earnings is. Now you don't have to worry about earnings for another three months, right? But the stock got crushed, it got pummeled, 10% drop in the stock. And where you made money as an options trader is because your knowledge and your understanding of this implied volatility reaction brought profits. Your front month options is where you made all of your money. You've lost money on this one, but it does not matter because your aggregate position, your option you sold offsets your option you bought. The gain here was greater than the loss here. Again, this is pure mathematical approach. This is this is non-emotional. This is an objective approach, and you can see, all right, it it got absolutely killed on a on a price move, right? Fifty points on the uh, five hundred or six hundred dollar stock, pretty big, and you made you know almost fifty percent, uh, over fifty percent. So let's move on. What's the next one we want to look at? Uh, we can say let's roll down here. Let me let me find something a little bit lower priced here. What's DuPont? Sixty three dollars. All right. So DuPont, another stock. Um, we can just look at three years on the daily time frame. You know you've got earnings here. You've got earnings here. You've got earnings. You know you don't have the pretty big massive gaps like you do on some of these other ones but you know you can see here I mean it's you know it drops from in this point 75 to 50 and it's a pretty sizable move right I mean I don't know I don't follow DuPont I don't read their uh, internals I don't understand all the inner workings the fundamental analysis of this company I don't care I really don't I want to look at a price I want to know what I I want to use what I know to be true about options and say, all right, well, if I want to come in here and say, uh, here's an earnings announcement here, and it's going to their estimates were 10 cents, they reported 13 cents, and this was on 10.27 before market open. Well, let's go look at that. Let's say, let's look at DuPont. And we will go 10.20. We'll go just a week or so before 
the earnings announcement and say this much smaller stock, premium is a lot less, we'll notice that it's before market opens on the 27th. This is the price that you're looking at. You already experienced a gap open, not around earnings for some reason. Maybe this was a news event. Maybe this was a special announcement. Maybe this was, you know, who knows? Who knows the reason for a gap open? But you've got an unfilled gap at this point. Doesn't matter. You're not going to use that into your decision making process. I'm going to say, I'm going to go right here at the money. I am going to sell $1.26. I'm going to buy $1.65. I have a $39 trade. That's what I got. And this, this is sometimes just bad data, but the T plus zero line is flat, and this is your expiration break even. So we'll just convert that trade, and we can say we've got 24, we've got 21.8. Let's go the 26th at the end of the day, 13.30, and we'll see that we'll have a front month implied volatility of 27. We've got a back month implied volatility of 22, and this was our trade. It's now we're, we're getting pressured to this upper edge of the tent, and earnings is going to happen before market opens on the 27th which technically means after the market closes on the 26th, right? So let's just go to the next day and watch what 27 and 22 will become. Oh, of course, what did that one? Why did that one not populate? Let's go in here. Now we wanna go Format, nope, okay, fine, there it is, there it is. <laughs> All right, why did that not populate? Well, that didn't work out so well. This right here drops, though, after the earnings is reported. Let me go to another day, one more day, and see if it brings it over. And so what you have then is let's change this and see if. That may make it a little bit. You have the, the earnings is known, and so then what you have now in this case is the option you sold for $1.26, you have to go buy back at $5.57. What you purchase for $1.65, you get to sell for $5.69, but this move you were already up on your upper edge of your tent and the move just absolutely killed it to the upside so you lost your trade i mean it's you're going to lose trades but the the premise and the concept does not change let's let's find a different one here let's go instead of dupont let's let's look at disney i was talking about disney just this last week so disney let's look in this area here we've got Earnings on August 5th, 2014. Estimates were 116. Actuals were $1.28. Huge hit win. Let's see what happened to an options trade. So we will go to Disney. And just on a side note here, I have now removed SanDisk and added Disney to the top 30 of underlyings that I'm going to start monitoring and using as viable trades and one of the criteria is is there a lot of open interest is there a lot of volume do we have penny white spreads do we have good uh, execution Disney I'm not very familiar with it I don't I haven't traded it I am you know I want to watch it and add it to the basket of stocks I'll trade but um, you always want to never get locked into being married to one thing over another. All right, you always want to stay flexible and you always want to make sure that you're just following a, a discipline and a very structured approach so that you can evaluate your performance much easier and much more efficiently. I mean, that's 
that's my thought process on on this and so you've got May 1st it wasn't May 1st it was August 1st why did it type May so you've got August 1st you're coming up into earnings on the fifth after market close all right so we've got to choose between 15 days to expiration or 50 <clears throat> we use the the 50 and the 78 there's very little skew they're pretty much trading for the same implied volatility the front month and the back month we can come into 15 days to expiration we've got a couple days left well maybe we want to we want to go into this one what that shows you is <clears throat> I sell for dollar 75 I buy for 268 it's a $93 trade if I sold this one and bought this one it's a $65 trade I have more time this one I, I receive more credit for what I sell I pay more debit for the protective hedge but let's say that we want to do this one here all right so we'll convert the trade we'll go forward to the day of the earnings earnings haven't reported yet but you know we've got 24.3 we've got 20.2 September October same thing 20.2 20.2 this is our trade again we're up on this upper edge we've only got 11 days to expiration and we're you know prepared if we have a big move to the upside we're gonna lose we're gonna lose we've got a heavily negative Delta we're still positive theta but watch the implied volatility 24 and 20 all right 19 and 18 so implied volatility drops significantly earnings were reported your fear and your uncertainty is gone your stock didn't really move anywhere earnings released and you made your profit and that you're not always going to make profit but when this discrepancy or when this IV is much larger and it drops much more significantly let's look at IBM then that's when you're going to realize the greatest gains uh, we can look at this one right here what is this October 20th 2014 estimates 430 actual 368 huge miss stock pays for it right so um, October 20 before market opens show let's go 10 10 2014 and we'll look at IBM okay so what do we have we know that earnings is coming up if this is a price chart we're looking at I should really probably write this down <laughs> 10 20 2014 all right so this is <clears throat> the price chart that we are trading maybe we're big blue fans we love IBM we're we're you know longtime supporter of it we know that it respects uh, price chart and price action and technical analysis pretty well um, we're just gonna say that you know what we're gonna take a non-directional approach earnings are coming up 43 days expiration I wouldn't trade these if i am trading an earnings announcement but absolutely have no qualms trading a November D's so 22.5 20.3 we still got 10 days you know we could we could put something on now we could wait let's let's wait till how about the Friday before and let's just see what that does to us we've got 22.8 and 20.6 so if we maybe we put something on we put one on here we sell one here we've got a hundred dollar trade we've got something we're selling for 566 we're buying for 673 but notice this is an expiration Friday third Friday of every month is expiration Friday for options so 22.8 20.6 we'll go to 
it was the 20th before market opens, we have 18 and 17. So we had a big drop, we had the earnings get absolutely killed, and that's what we had. That's, that's what ended up being the net result. The drop in volatility on this point was not significant enough to overcompensate for the decline in the price. Price dropped significantly and the stock paid for it. The options premiums paid for it. So I don't want to leave the impression that every single, you know, that, that we've discovered something that's unknown and, uh, you know, we can just go out and exploit the heck out of this. No, I mean, this is just, this is how the uh, premium and this is how the volatility to options works. Furthermore, this is exactly why um, I am making this the first course. This is why I have introduced all new traders to calendar trades first. It's not by accident. It is, it is by very specific intentional design because it's it's so crucial you guys it's mandatory for you to understand how volatility impacts options trading and you know I do not it would be very reckless and it would be very irresponsible of me as a as a mentor as a helper as a teacher as you know uh, a friend to show somebody how to trade something that you don't fully understand and I can show you the the flattest T plus zero line on a butterfly or a condor known to man that wins 90% plus of the time and blows your accounts away but if you don't understand the risks and the dangers associated around both price and volatility it's just it's um, it, it's it's not something that I want to do. So the calendars are a very great way to expose you to why these options work the way they do and why they're so sensitive to volatility. And it's, you know, earnings and news events are the prime example to show you, you know, let's, let's go back even farther in time. Let's look at some, let's go back. I mean, maybe we can even just go back into here into 2012. Let's look at Las Vegas Sands. Let's look at 2012 and look at some earnings announcements there. Again, it's a very inexpensive stock. The options, <clears throat> the option premium is going to be very small. Earnings here, you have estimates of 60 cents, actual 70. Uh, huge win and the stock got crushed. It got, I mean, you had a gap open after earnings, but then it just, the, the earnings weren't enough to overcome whatever in the company. So 425 2012 aftermarket close. 425.12. So we'll go to Las Vegas Sands and we'll say I'm gonna go back to April 25th, 2012. Let's just close this first. Sometimes the option view gets a little buggy. 425-2012. Come on, fat fingers. Make it work. <laughs> so this is the this is the day the earnings are going to report after the market closes. Alright? So let's just go a week before. Let's let's just go here seven days before. You've got 31 days to expiration, you've got 59 days to expiration here. You've got this cycle getting ready to expire in a couple of days. I've got implied volatility at 41, implied volatility at 38. If I sell one and buy one, I'm selling 267, I'm buying 340. It's a $70 trade. That's what it gives me. I've got defined area that I want it to stay in. I've got a known period of time before these options expire. And I can say, well, I can handle a move up to say here to here and what I'm playing is the volatility coming out after the earnings is announced. 
after their earnings are announced. So let's just go here to the day before and we'll look at the implied volatility. We're at 40 and 38. So earnings come out. It's the day after earnings. You've got 40, you've got 38. Now becomes 35 and 35. All right. It did not drop nearly as drastically as some of the other examples we've seen, but the stock, it it gapped open here, right? Remember we looked at Thinkorswim, it gapped open here, and then after the earnings came out, earnings were on the after, right? 425 after market close. That's pretty interesting, right? I mean, I thought I thought this happened after the earnings came out. This actually was the day of earnings, and you had right here. We'll just zoom in on this a little bit, right? You had this is the 24th. You have earnings coming out tomorrow. Stock gaps open and just just trades. It closes on the high of the day on the earnings announcement day. Earnings haven't been reported yet. It's after the market closes, but yet you have a stock that gapped open and closed up on the high here. So let's say, for example, you are a trader that believes that this company is toast. It's going down. <laughs> you know, they made they, they made earnings. They beat earnings by 10 cents a share, but yet you have the day of the earnings announcements, you have a close at the high of the day. High of 58.8, close at 58.78. And you say, you know what? That's that's gonna that there's no way this is gonna continue going up. We're gonna target this down here. We're gonna target 56 or even 55. And I am going to use what I have learned about both volatility as well as my price. Uh, directionality of these trades and say all right we're gonna go I'm gonna go the day of earnings we're gonna go at the close earnings haven't been announced yet they have not been released we've got a big update two dollars and 38 cents of a move it's at 58.78 you know what I don't buy it I don't believe in it I'm gonna say I'm going to target 55. I'm going to sell one. I'm going to buy one. $76 trade. I'm selling 46% IV. I'm buying 41% IV. I'm selling $1.20. I'm buying $1.96. This is a directionally bearish calendar. I don't believe this move. All right. Now, if that's my approach and if that's what I'm thinking at this point in time, and this is the trade I execute. I have defined risk. I have my bias. I have my understanding of what's going to happen after the earnings come out. And I say, all right, how much am I going to make on this trade? My, my volatility came out significantly. I got my directional move. All right, well, so I made my $17 on 76. I made my 22%. Do I close it? Do I just say, well, there's still plenty of time. Let me keep it open and let me wait another week. Let me see if this move gains some momentum and some strength. And you know, we know it does because we're looking at this chart here. We have benefit of hindsight. We know that it continues to drop, but you can see that utilizing two different pieces of data, uh, constructing a directional trade in a, in, a, in a direction that you believe in, in this example bearish, combined with what you know about what's going to happen, implied volatility, I mean you really can, you can really create a you know, double whammy benefit for a very small defined amount of risk. And then if you're wrong, you're still going to get the deflation and volatility. You may pick wrong on direction, but you still get the decline in the volatility. All right, does that make sense? Please tell me it does, but 
this is a recording, so you can't tell me if it does. Just email me. Send me an email. Send me a thought. All right. Um, let's just let's keep going. Um, I'll go. I'll go for about ten more minutes here. I don't. I do not mind at all because I think it's so important. Tesla. Let's look at Tesla. Well, let's look at Priceline and then Tesla. High flyers, sexy stocks. People love them. Um, love them or not, you know, you got to respect them. They're, um, you know, they are what they are. Priceline. Let's go back here. We've got earnings estimates 930, actual 1085. Huge hit, huge win. Stock benefits tremendously. Gap open, trades up, reverses, gap fills. So let's go back to February 19th, 2015 on Priceline. So let's just close this, go to Priceline. We will go to February 1st, 2015, February 2nd. All right, so we know that we've got earnings coming up. We've got them coming before the market opens on the 19th, which is the same as after the market on the 18th. I don't know why they do those. I mean, I'm sure there's a reason. I just don't know why. But um, So we're looking at a couple of weeks away. And would we want to do the 19 days expiration or would we want to start maybe watching these? All right. So I would say we'll start watching these and we'll just go a couple of days and we'll begin watching the implied volatility. Again, the at the money is what we're trading. That's got the most activity. It's got the most sensitivity. It's got the most reaction to the volatility. And you'll notice you've got a positive skew. Front month is greater than the back month, both Feb, March, both March, April. And we know that we have earnings that are coming up in a couple of weeks. So we've got a week until earnings uh, after the close on the 18th. We've got, this is our price chart that we're trading. And for all you chartists out there, we've got you know a downward move, we've got retrace, We've got a higher low. We've got a retrace. So, you know, what do we have? We've got swing point low. We've got a lower high. We've got a higher low. We've got a lower high. And then we've got a decline down, lower low. So, what's your bias? Up, down, sideways, don't care. I don't care. Um, 38 and 29. We've got it coming in a week, but these are will only have three days to expiration. So let's do two different let's do two different examples here. Let's do this one, all right. Knowing that we've got 38 and we've got 29, so let's go to the week. You know, a week later, right before earnings is coming out, we've got 38 and we've got 29. That now becomes well, <laughs> we're big strong move already and what have we got we've got a big loss because we were way down here at 1060 all right so that was a if you came in a week early like that you will not be benefiting from that volatility because you're too far away you'll see you're too far away you're you're out of the window of playability if you will so this trade you would have to either close up at one of these expiration break even points or accept the risk that say well maybe they're going to miss earnings and maybe they're going to drop maybe they're going to fall back into this window but if they don't and they hit and they go higher I'm it's going to be a hundred percent losing trade so that's one approach using too close you know 10 days to expiration knowing that Yes, you've got a positive skew, but when the earnings come out, you're only going to have three days left in which to do something. Versus we'll come here, same thing, we'll come at the money. We'll say we still have 29 and 27. Let's go a week, a week into the future. The price move was exactly the same. We still got out. You know, the price move wasn't any different, but our loss was different because we had more time. We had a lot more 
uh, a lot less sensitivity to that deep in the money option. We still have 31 and we still have 28. And looking right at the money, we've got 28 and 26. Earnings is getting ready to come out. Why, even though we're super deep in the money, let's just say that this is what we're going to stay with. And earnings comes out, we have 31 and 28. Earnings report and our 31 and 28 now become, ah, did it again, darn it. All right, well, the, the subsequent decline, you can see it went here 24 and 24. So the options here, the implied volatility here is also going to get that subsequent decline, but you can't overcome a 95 point move to the upside. You've, you've realized a 100% loss, not 100%, you still have, you know, $964 trade, but you missed the earnings. Your trade construction was not conducive to benefiting from this implied volatility because the move was just too great. The move was too high. And that is the, probably um, something that you have to accept if you know, you're going to take your knowledge of earnings and how the implied volatility changes. All right. I know somebody's thinking this. Well, then why don't we just go right before, let's go the day of earnings and play that. Well, that's that's very viable. You can absolutely do that. But my, my question that I want you to think about is I've, I have 28 and 26. I have the volatility that's going to still decrease I still have the same amount of price move. I'm way outside of my tent here. I will not realize as great of a loss by coming a week prior, but I still am going to have the volatility decline just the same as if I come into a week or two weeks previously. The reason why I don't like to come the day before is that gives you no that gives you no extra distance to let some of this knowledge of earnings, um, how earnings it changes the implied volatility, that gives you no cushion as you're leading up to that. Where leading into earnings, yes, this is going to increase, but so is this, and after the earnings releases. Um, it just, it's been my experience that that one to two week time horizon prior to earnings performs a whole lot better than just coming the day before. Now let's look at one other one and then we'll just, we'll close this up Tesla. Tesla's another one that, you know, high flyer, people love it. It's got a lot of uh, attraction. Whatever your opinion is on the company, you know, you can see, I don't want to use this one here. Let's use this one here. Let's go May 6th after market close. Estimates were 81 cent loss, actual was 36 cents. So huge win on earnings side. And yet even though they were net loss on the earnings, it still came in better than what estimates were. All right, so we'll go five, six on 2015. All right, and we will see what that does. All right, so let's go to Tesla. And we will go back here to 5, 6, 2015. And we will say, okay, we know that earnings is on this day. Let's go back. Oh, we'll go back a week or so. So you've got May, June, or June, Sep, but we could 
<clears throat> you would have access to June, July. Now, um, this is absolutely, you know, something to talk about. You can skip months like that. You can say, well, I've got 41 and 39. I've got June, skip over July, skip over August. I have September as my protective hedge. It doesn't change, it's still a calendar trade. You just have a lot more time of protection on this back month. 2273 is what you're paying. 1461 is what you're selling. But if you're making an earnings play, you're wanting to exploit some of this volatility, right? Your knowledge of how volatility builds coming into earnings and then it deflates immediately after the earnings are revealed. So if we said we wanted to do this, all right, well, we have our, our defined window. We have our T plus zero line. We say, all right, I'm selling 1162, I'm buying 1461. I'm going after the market closes on May 5th. I think that's when it was. After market closes, yep. So I'm gonna say, all right, May 5th, I've got 11 days, I've got 63 and 41. This is my tent window, this is my T plus zero line. I've got a very narrow window and 63 and 41 after the earnings come out Instead of 63 and 41, we become, is it, hang on a second. Stand by Houston, am I on the wrong year? Five, six after market closes. That's why, because I'm on five, six, not five, five. <laughs> all right, so we've got 66 and 42. All right, this is our, this is our price chart, or this is our risk profile. Earnings come out. And our 66 and 42 now become, once it refreshes, 35 and 34. And so you will see that you had the big move, your earnings, your implied volatility, you only have nine days left expiration. You had a big move, but you still have a wildly profitable trade. All right. And so. You can be wrong on direction, you can be right on direction. You're gonna be one or the other, right? 50-50. But what you can be 100% sure of is going to happen is this implied volatility is going to drop after the earnings come out. It might not be enough to overcome a price move. It might be more than enough to overcome a price move. That's for you to experiment with and, and practice with and do the leg work and do the heavy lifting on to see if you can add to your basket and add to your knowledge and say, well, you know what? Yes, I believe that I've found an edge here and uh, you know, I want to I want to keep trading this edge. Now, the last thing and then I'll close it up. On on the calendar trades, the reason why they are so sensitive to um, these changes in volatility, all right? It's, it's a, both a benefit and it's a drawback. The benefit is, yes, you get massive changes in one month over the other, all right? The drawback is, let's say that, let's just get rid of that. And let's say that earnings have come out. I still see a positive skew. I've got nine days to expiration and I want to go in and trade this, all right? I've still got a delta neutral trade, but I've got a lot more exposure to a big, big move one way or the other. But what happens is the sensitivity to implied volatility on these front month options right here, nine days to expiration, back month options, 44 days to expiration, they do not change uniformly meaning this one does not change precisely the same ratio that this one changes. And what you'll notice and what you see by that is when you are looking at a risk profile graph, and this is what you're looking at, a volatility change, if volatility increases by 5%, 
Now you look at this whole expiration graph changed, all right? It changed from a peak profit at the tent, pro maximum profit at the peak is $384. If we have a 5% increase, well, now it's 529. Conversely, if you have a 5% decline, well, now you only have 242. So calendars specifically are very sensitive to these changes in volatility when you have differing expiration cycles. And the reason that is so mandatory to understand is that then when you begin trading options in the same expiration cycle, all right, you still have influence and still have changes in volatility. You have, say, this, all right, this is just a, a simple debit spread, all right. Actually, it's a it's a credit spread because the call option we sold is deeper in the money than the one we purchased. Credit spread, but if I increase by 5%, expiration line doesn't change at all. If I decrease it by 5%, expiration line never changes. What changes is my T plus zero line because that is sensitive to volatility, not the expiration graph. When you are trading calendars and you are cross month like this, that is 100% sensitive to these changes in volatility because this is going to change differently than this one. And you've seen that repeatedly over the last hour on different examples how the front month, closer to expiration, closer to a news event, closer to earnings, these, these changes in implied volatility on one month one expiration cycle compared to a different expiration cycle is what makes the difference between um, these options either being these option spreads being profitable or not okay so on that note um, I do hope that this has maybe opened your eyes a little bit to why volatility is so important how you can use what you've learned in the prior lessons and um, in this course to uh, you know go into the market whether it's in an earnings environment situation whether it's in a news event situation whether it's in a big index basket of stocks that has little influence to earnings or news announcements you know changes in volatility um, it's just added more knowledge to your to your bucket <laughs> to be able to go forward and, and practice and experiment with this, okay? So, um, next video lesson number nine, I'm going to talk about ETFs and indexes and these, these bigger baskets of stocks um, because, you know, let's face it, when you have this much sensitivity to equities that have news events, that have surprise announcements, that have board of director meetings that, you know, fire CEOs and and do things that you cannot prepare for in addition to earnings and in addition to, you know, market risk. Well, you're not necessarily going to you're going to still have that, but at a less uh, degree when you start trading the indexes and some of the major ETFs. Uh, SPY being the most liquid, the most heavily traded ETF and that's the ETF of the S&P 500. So next video lesson, that's what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna talk about that. We're gonna go through multiple examples, different market scenarios, different market environments, um, talk about penny wide spreads, talk about the wider spreads, and still use the calendar approach where we're separating expiration cycles between the shorts and the longs and just show you how they react, okay? so. Look, uh, look forward to that, and um, thanks again for spending your time watching this. I, I truly, truly, really hope that you are um, adding to your knowledge base and that you're getting some value out of this. Uh, if not, please don't hesitate for a second to send me an email so I can make this better uh, in the future going forward, okay? Um, thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.